गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे आवर स्पीकर इज डॉक्टर आदिति रूपाणी शाह शी इज अ पैशनेट होमियोपैथ एंड अशियस रीडर टूडेज केस शी कुड सॉल्व ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ हर दिस हैबिट ऑफ रीडिंग इट्स सो इजी फॉर हर टू ग्रास वेरियस मेथड वेरियस न्यू थिंग्स हैपनिंग इन द होमियोपैथी she integrated her knowledge so well and only because of this integration she could handle such a challenging case today's case is a very difficult case which she handled very easily so let's see what is the case today so i invite dr aditi dr aditi please share your case thank you nirmal and thank you team i feel that it is our team uh, which has uh, really made me solve this case wonderfully because uh, the way we were discussing and we were learning newer uh, remedies in our uh, uh, regular uh, studies okay friends so now i am sharing my case yeah is my screen visible yes sir ji yeah okay all right so yeah this is a case of a necrotic migratory erythema or glucagonoma in a middle aged male around uh, of 60 plus age he had uh, come to me with a presenting complain of uh, skin rashes on hands trunk and lower part of the body confluent lesions of irregular shapes there was tremendous itching and a lot of exfoliation uh, commencing from center to periphery and the eruptions were appearing in the cyclical patterns like uh, a few will appear on the trunk then hands and then lower part of the body and then again a uh, newer will come on the uh, uh, hands and similar pattern were repeated so i asked him what is your concern he said to attack the skin problem and uh, he also had associated complaints like uh, in the uh, lungs he had a right sided upper lobe lung lesions which was diagnosed as mdr cox 2 years ago and he is still on the treatment for that same he is a known case of diabetes mellitus he has also having myasthenia gravis his angioplasty was done for ihd 5 uh, years back he has a history of herpes zoster 6 months back because of uh, the on the immunosuppression treatment for uh, mdr cox and multiple other pathologies which he is suffering he also has cirrhosis of the liver mild ascites and first degree of esophageal varices he has developed paresthesia in the limbs as a side effects of uh, anti cox treatment he has developed ear tinnitus and there is tremendous weakness now i went into his uh, life history there is a, a lot of stress at work due to illness and work ethics he is he is a doctor by profession he is a, a physician uh, now at home he is uh, living with his wife and son he is stressed because the son has some issues in his marriage then i went into his history further that he has lost his mother at a very early age and uh, then he was separated from his father being a very young uh, he and his brother were sent to maternal uh, uncle's uh, home and then maternal uncle and aunt raised them he he feels that he has never gotten parents love and he had had to face lot of challenges in his life and he uh, then uh, he said that i talk very less and with uh, during the interview also i was constantly feeling that yes like he is a man of less words uh, precise words few words but precise words but he would not keep on elaborating everything then uh, there is uh, in his nature there is lot of irritability and annoyance he likes to come straight to the point 
he he gets very angered with the loud noise and loud music to such an extent that he said that i avoid going to even the family weddings because i cannot tolerate noise and music loud sounds and i just leave i just leave any function most of the times i don't go only if i go uh, and if uh, the music is very loud i will just leave that function basically i am a very soft spoken person i never go to parties i like to socialize only in the family environment i am happy with the family environment i like to read and follow spiritual scriptures i have faith in principles of karma i believe uh, uh, in a very ethical practice that suits me very well there was no backing from my family i had to start from zero and come up to where i am today and uh, he he had to leave the corporate setup of the practice as he could not ignore the mal practices and could, could not take the injustice he and he had to leave that corporate setup and presently now he is working uh, in a in a at a hospital where he is very happy about and he is also having a charitable uh, practice he feels very helpless as he thinks that he cannot fight with this mighty power of corporates i don't have any business angle in me i am very workaholic i love my work i have passion for medicine i want to practice medicine till the end of my life but now it has become very difficult to work with such skin problems i could manage with all other path uh, pathology my pathologies but this skin problem has made me helpless my health has always remained very very delicate since childhood i have a very brittle health many and right from childhood i have suffered from lot of infective diseases like typhoid otitis media severe severe jaundice meningoencephalitis and many more i got a history from his another family member of his is is he believes in a very simple living he is a simple a simple man with high thinking simple living and high thinking he is irritable and angry by nature he is very impatient and he is rude and curt in talking which even i could feel palpit in uh, while uh, uh, i was uh, talking with him uh, during the case history of course he was trying to be as polite as possible now uh, so the remedy we all know i had given him uh, plutonium nitricum 200 two doses that was my first prescription and then uh, after 10 days i got the follow up and the skin was better he also had complained of backache uh, which was better and i continued him on uh, phytum then after 10 days the next follow up the skin uh, was uh, still improving few new spots were coming but they were not aggressive as before the itching was very less the backache of course was aggravated because of the change of posture and he was feeling very tired and irritable because of the pain and uh, by then he was diagnosed with a vertebral fracture which he had uh, severe back pain so i had uh, i again repeated plutonium nitricum 200 two doses in the uh, uh, next follow up after 10 days the skin rashes were much better backache better there were mild mild uh, uh, exertional dyspnea and the steroid doses were reduced a lot uh, because his skin was improving constantly uh, uh, and the prescription was he was kept on acid then the next follow up after 15 days there was no rash no itching he was feeling bored now he started feeling bored because he was better so now he didn't like to sit at home uh and uh, so he was feeling bored and very uh, typically he told one thing that now i'm feeling bitter taste in my mouth and uh, so i i uh, felt it that way that all his inner bitterness has gone from within the system and now it has just come to the mouth and it will come out from there and he um, the the family member told me that he is talking very sweetly and politely with people uh which he which they had not seen in so many years and the uh, the phytum continued 
Then uh, again, after 15 days, the another follow up, uh, there was little skin rash coming up, though there was not much itching and diarrhea on and off due to the uh, anti-cox medicines. And uh, since the skin rash was, was coming again, I gave him uh, plutonium nitricum 200, one dose. And then follow up after one month, skin was better, better. And uh, so this was uh, around three to four months of uh, follow-ups I had. And then uh, he continued doing well and uh, he was much better. He resumed his work also and uh, the, the whole case was solved this way. Now, uh, uh, having understood this uh, case and follow-up, we will go to this analysis, how I have come to plutonium nitricum in this case. See, these are the uh, uh, lesions on office uh, skin problems before the treatment, uh, uh, back, hand, uh, and uh, legs. And these are all the uh, drying off of the lesions and healing of the lesions post-treatment. This result had started right from the first prescription and it kept on improving. Now, my analysis. What I understood after taking the case is that this is a case of multiple grave pathologies. Without any apparent cause, I couldn't get any apparent cause or uh, precipitating cause as such during the history. But a lot of destruction was seen all over in the body. So many pathologies. And so I understood that from the beginning, there was a lot of suffering in his, how, in his life. He losing mother at very early age, then getting separated from the father, living with uncle. He never got parents' love in his life. These are his words. He, and he could not love anybody in that childhood. He's, he studied medicine despite his circumstances. He always wanted to become a doctor and uh, serve the humanity. Then he had suffered, uh, in his own words, he said that he suffered a lot of fi uh, financial crunches in younger days. Even he had to uh, forego the prospects of further studies abroad due to the same, in spite of he having a, a brilliant uh, mind. He had no support. He worked very hard to reach where he is today. He's a very straightforward and ethical person. He took the medical profession as very sacred one and not as the business, working with charitable organizations and using his skills for the needy people, needy patients. He felt helpless in dealing with the mighty power of the corporates and unethical practices. In his, in his talks during interview, if we see certain words what he is using, uh, you know, ethical person, mighty power, helplessness, uh, uh, all these words are having a lot of weightage in selecting the remedy. He could not tolerate all these uh, malpractices. He could not turn a blind eye to it. In the bargain, he suffered multiple illnesses. And this was bringing a lot of anger, resentments, uh, uh, what was going on in the society. He loved his work. He's very workaholic and sincere very passionate about his work. He's a simple person with high thinking, very spiritual. He believes in karma theory. He finds it very convincing. Our life is the resultant fruit of our own karmas of previous lives. And the other side of him is, he has a lot of anger and resentment inside, due to which he's very snappish and curt in talking. He does not like socializing, aloof and isolated. Angry person. It can be palpated in during the interview as well. Though he tries to appear humble and polite, in his own words, his anger can be very damaging. Although he cools down very fast. He is a person of few words, likes straight talks, come to the point. That is how he says to his patients as well. He cannot tolerate loud sound, avoid even social functions and parties and everything. He does like and love family. He craves for it, but he doesn't know how to express it. So here we, uh, so when I, I, I uh, took the whole history and I analyzed the case, I realized 
that this is actually you know there is so much of simmering anger inside and uh, the bomb which generally explodes outside his bomb has exploded inside giving him all these grave path pathologies and completely a syphilitic case and so that is how you know i i thought of this uh, uh plutonium uh, nightcom now here we see all these themes of mother separation for separation from father mother dying in the young age separation from the father and from the family of his own uh, siblings then there is isolation there is very hard work and passion for work very ethical very spiritual altruism now helping patients and all generally we see that uh, we will come uh, as we will progress further we will un understand how this altruism is stro seen st so uh, strongly and prominently in this actinide themes so this is altruism helping patients autonomy he likes autonomy he cannot work under anybody uh, he he see and uh, in actinides we see these also wisdom they are very wise people they are not clever people clever people are always into looking into their uh, their business their profits he is not clever there is a wisdom in him he is very observant and very perceiving perceiving type of a person there is lot of internalized anger old age uh, old age though he is in his 60s but his pathologies are uh, very uh, old age type of pathologies and lot of destruction is seen in the whole case these are some rubrics which i had uh, taken uh just i had seen those rubrics uh to understand plutonium nitricum more basically my prescription had come uh, from the th understanding of the themes and uh, uh, this uh, 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 anger internalized so there, there is a despair of the world despair of recovery uh, he is averse to being dis uh, disturbed he is detached estranged from his family express expressing a oneself very difficult forsaken feeling isolation sensation grief about past events when he was talking about his his childhood and all like i could perceive it it is like as fresh though he is in his 60s those this though these things had happened long past in the uh, in the ages of 7 and 5 7 and 10 still when he was talking i could see that grief still uh, in his eyes so so uh, uh, obvious impatience from interruption uh, irritability from the talk of others exalted love for the family mother fixation restlessness reading ameliorates as i said that he, he reads a lot about medical books and about the spiritual books and that that calms him down he is a uh, hesitant uh, about aversion to superficial matters these people are very deep people these people are very spiritual people wise people they they don't like this superficialness of the materialistic world they feel unfortunate withdrawn from the reality and inflammation of the wounds then i found this rubric which was very surprising to me as well i saw this anxiety taste in the mouth with bitter which uh, which he had expressed in one of the follow ups for the for third or fourth follow up where he said that i have started getting bitter taste in my mouth and plutonium nitricum to my surprise is a single re re remedy in this anger internalized sensorious company aversion to alone ameliorates conscientious about trifles uh, then uh, delusion of emptiness uh, delusion she was being lifted delusion the uh, uh, body is separated world uh, body uh, world is separated from uh, rubrics we will definitely consider more in our next lecture where which we are going to continue our plutonium study and it will be taken in great great depth by dr anita and dr shubha so now this actinides the main feeling of actinide is this feeling of disintegration which is the old age in old age we see this kind of disintegration versus the efforts to prevent the same same disintegration which is the control of the anal age this will be elaborated more by dr kushala 
uh, in uh, with the with respect to understanding of periodic table they work very hard to achieve this this results in isolation and instability chaos further disintegration which brings on severe despair in them the strong symptoms of this series is inner heaviness and darkness decay and destruction the control and prevent uh, 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 fragmentation and dis disintegration extremes of life and death severe destructive deep pathologies loss of power function and freedom the isolation and the hidden quality is seen through their placements in the periodic table as we know that actinides are always hidden from the third column in the periodic table these are the diseases of intergenerational stretch not restricted to present lifetime alone but these are the deep buried traumas of many lives originating from one's forefathers it is like a punishment echoing down through generations and the reason of it uh, and even in our patient even in his own words he said like i i i i, I resonate with this theory of karmas these are the fruits of the past karmas which we are bearing in today's life then and this this transgenerational trauma and transgenerational suffering is because of this nuclear and electromagnetic pollutions created by the actinides the central theme of plutonium is the deep feeling of suffering which we see in this case out and out right from the childhood this desire they desires this transcendence for its self and for the external world through the illumination it wants to be a powerful light which brings order to the chaos through its own vibrations they want to bring that powerful light to the light life they they want to create and propagate now this seventh radioactive periodic uh, 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 element in the periodic table represent this core that energizes our beings what we are it is it energizes our very being it is this powerful source this will this basic instinct and the cell nuclei which generates this force this force of creating and propagating like a bone marrow which churns out red blood cells out of the life or this natural energy which which we uh, which nowadays are nuclear energies which are using used in terms of energizing and uh, uh, electricity so these are the uh, uh, power projects which energizes our existence the ability to use this core energy creatively depends on two factors the integration with all the levels of being existent how we are existing and there should be the slow release now this slow is a very important part because it is so power packed energy that if it is uh, if it is not released slowly it will bring devastation it will bring complete destruction so it has to be the slow release the speed has to be um, managed the speed brings on destructions and chaos so like this raw energy of this radioactive elements this Uh, this these confined forces should come to the surface very slowly naturally gently from the depth of the marrow earth if we if it is dragged incongruously to the surface it becomes dangerous and it must be controlled then it brings the devastation this violent and destructive energy is the root of our survival as well now this plutonium nitricum plutonium is one part actinide which we just saw the themes of the actinides uh, uh, and the energy of actinide now in plutonium nitricum we see the nitricum part as well so there is a nitricum molecule now what does this nitricum do to this remedy because of this nitricum it usually tends to limit and restrict the ions it it associates with here it is associating with plutonium so it is restricting this tremendous explosive power of the plutonium and uh, this suppression results in the frightful black depressions and deep enormous rage which we see in plutonium nitricum to very great extent then now this this results in the compressed nuclear violence which some plutonium patients have described as intense enough to destroy the world during proving 
some cured plutonium patients were powerful individuals who have suppressed their deep and vital inner core due to the fear of this unleashing increased destructive violence. In Materia Medica of plutonium nitricum, we find two opposite sets of symptoms. A group of them are the symptoms related to the sensation of obligation, decay, disintegration, and heaviness. And on the other group, we are seeing this sensation of lightness, high spirit, beautiful mystical feelings, which we both the sides we saw beautifully in our patient. So here, this is my uh, understanding and analysis of the case. And now I'm stop sharing. Yes, friends. Aditi, one thing I would like to say from what you had shared this case, uh, yeah. that time you also said that the suffering is so deep in this patient that her, his mother died when he was seven years old. And since then, yeah. he has not even celebrated any of his birthday because the mother died on, on, on his birthday. True, true, true. On the same day, right? His birthday. Yeah. The mother's yeah. death on his birthday. Yes, true, true. Yes, yes. So that is the mother theme, which we, which which is, which is generally seen in actinide so prominently. And like my my patient was just, I think so. Like he was a, he, I feel it is a, it is a nature's this thing, you know, to teach us what I, what is plutonium nitricum, what is actinide, you know, the out and out every single theme he was he kept on talking about. Yeah. So now I invite uh, Dr. Kushala. Dr. Kushala, you can uh, throw some more lights on uh, plutonium nitricum as a as a remedy. Yes. Thank you, Aditi. So hello, friends. So let us look into the periodic table of actinides and then come to plutonium nitricum. So this being the periodic table, what we understand over here that the actinides come in row seven. This entire row where actinide is in the row seven and third column. So all these 15 elements are given separately down below over here is so actinide themes will be row seven and column three. So when we look at it in this perspective, all the elements in row seven, that is the uranium series are radioactive and they emit certain kinds of electromagnetic rays like alpha, beta, gamma, which causes these elements to disintegrate so much that they turn into a new element. So actinium belongs to the meeting point of row seven and column three. So the main issues of these actinides is a feeling of fragmentation and disintegration. Means there is so much of destruction and disintegration on one side, the row seven theme of old age versus a strong need to hold things together. That is the anal or the toddler stage where you are also having themes of column three, which is still in a child sort of toddler stage. So there's total destruction and devastation of self and others. It's like a big catastrophe. It's not a small destruction. It's like a disaster as big as an earthquake or a volcano. So these row seven uh, individuals have high wisdom. They have high intelligence. They have invisible power. They can sort of reach their goals by pure intention. They have the power of a yogi or a sannyasi, like the shamans and prophets. From their subconscious, they can harness hidden knowledges and hidden powers. Okay, they are very hidden. You don't see actinides. They, they work also in a very hidden way because they have a need for an inner search for enlightenment. So it's not about a leader of a uh, set up or you know a leader of a company it's they work at a very large level they are world leaders they think of at a level of the universe so there is high level of uh, responsibility and they work for humanity at a large 
so because of this heavy responsibility, there is, you know, a suppression of their open spontaneous because there is a child and there's an adult. So because of this heavy responsibility, there is a suppression of the child in them. So you see a lot of adult-like control over their inner and outer world. They have a sense of inner darkness and heaviness and they need to control things so that they don't fall apart. They have a despair over their aging, over their destruction, over their disintegration of the body. In physical, you will see that their pathologies are very grave and there is huge loss of power, function and freedom. And their pathologies are so deep, which we saw in Aditi's case. They are hidden. I mean, they come up, it takes decades for the pathology to even emerge and it is slow to develop. And sometimes it is something which has taken generation by generation are taken up. It must be that this generation is suffering because of some previous you know, generational impact. So there will, you will see genetic disorders. You will see a lot of effects of intergenerational abuse. These are the effects of nuclear and electromagnetic uh, destructions. It's because of environmental pollutions and traumas buried deep in the subconscious from this lifetime or others. You never know why this patient is suffering. And we go back into the history, you may see that something in the family history where there was some generational impact or some genetic impact because of which reason you will find that this patient of yours is suffering. So we see that those seven themes per se of actinides is that so much of high responsibilities that they feel very heavy. They feel very overburdened and there's so much pressure in them that they want to break free from this. They want to let loose. And there is a splitting of oneself into many because of this type of pressure, which leads to disintegration and dis destruction where an energy is released. And this energy is so powerful that it can't be confined. It, it will lead to either a destruction or it will lead to a construction. So it's a power beyond humanity. It's a yogic type of power where it has nothing to do with materialism or possessions or prosperity. It's nothing. It's more spiritual. It's more in the enlightenment. It's more, it's more ethereal. Process of life into death, of being detached and isolated. And in column three, it's more of a toddler feeling. It's doubtful whether, you know, there's so much of energy and power, but I need to hold myself together. So there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of investigation, scanning, trying, underestimating, confused, discouraged, whether I can do it or not do it. And I, I need to hold myself together. Otherwise, I will disintegrate totally. So... Plutonium nitricum in these actinides is named after Pluto. He is the god of the underworld, of ghosts and spirits. And this is used to make atom bombs. So in plutonium nitricum, we will see a lot of prehistoric themes of the Neolithic era, of the Neanderthal uh, you know, uh, aspects. There is a lot of primitive instinct, instincts, male aggression and sex. And as we saw the genetic aspect, which is a theme also in actinides, in plutonium also you will see the sins of the family, which is passed from one generation to another. So a lot of DNA mutations which will take place. They have a lot of magic, out of body experience. They can visualize, you know, things from as an observer and not participate in the actual dream. And so that next time they can you know, do what is needful. So there's a lot of power in them to watch things as an uh, observer. This, uh, the power of a shaman, the power of a prophet, the power of a yogi. So there's magic in them. Broken glass is a recurrent theme. So since it, it acts so deeply, you will see a lot of cancer cases in them. If cancer of the bone, cancer of the lungs, Hodgkin's, leukemias, bone marrow affections, brain tumors, AIDS, genetic defects, congenital diseases. So deep is the pathology, so grave and so slow. And it is so bombarding. It's like, you know, something which is like a bomb which has hit you. So uh, I would invite Dr. Anita to talk more about the other rows, themes of the other rows of the periodic table.
Can you stop sharing? Yeah. So I just wanted to add that in one of the books I had read that periodic table is like a metaphor of life. So it is the evolution from the uh, first row to the last row. The evolution is at all levels. So even the size of particles and then uh, even the stages of life and everything. So first period represents soul. Second period represents body and organic life. That is carbon, oxygen and nitrogen. Then third is the family relations. So love is the theme. Nutrition is the theme. Like uh, natrum uh, natrum line. Then fourth is the society. Task, duty, work, soldier. So like Kali. Then fifth is the for the larger communities and communication is the theme. And com because of communication, it is important for nervous system. So nerves are the basic, you know, target of pathology. Sixth is the king, Aram series. King or ruler. Then seventh is the unseen, hidden, secretive, yet very powerful, deep subconscious. And it is like mystique. So it is like a magician, shaman, prophet. It is like, you know, they are kings from behind the sea. So king series is a proper king. And beyond that is someone who guides the king. Or who advises the king. So they are also known as king makers. Like there used to be gurus who used to guide, you know, uh, the kings. Then, as per tissue affinity also, if we go to see from fourth row, that is ferrum series, target tissue. Tissue affinity is of blood and muscles. Fifth is nerves and cartilages, like argentum. Sixth is uh, aurum and mercury, so they have a lot of affinity for bones and cartilages. Seventh is the bone marrow. Now, bone marrow is the generative power. It has stem cells and it which can create, you know, all types of cells, all types of tissues. So, bone marrow is very, very important. So, seventh row is uh, actinides. The uh, affinity is for bone marrows. That is why you see a lot of leukemia, destruction and uh, there is a lot of uh, multiplication of cells or pro proliferation and DNA or genetic disorders. So DNA is affected because nucleus is the target. So nucleus has all the genetic material. That is why you see uh, from generation to generation. So and I will request Aditi to also give family history of this patient. So that we can understand the miasmatic load of this person. Yeah. See, in the family, there uh, the mother had uh, died of uh, acute myeloid leukemia. And uh, the father also, uh, the, there was a strong history of uh, uh, this uh, IHDs and diabetes mellitus. And father also had neurodermatitis and uh, he had uh, dementia and then finally he had uh, passed away uh, with uh, this uh, dementia and uh, IHDs. So, uh, and uh, other uh, strong, very strong history of uh, diabetes mellitus also in the uh, family and IHDs. Now, Nirupama will talk about the PEM or inner age of the person. Yes. So, uh, plutonium nitricum. If you see, the plutonium combines with nitricum and forms this fo formula. Huh? So we have to think plutonium, nitrogen and oxygen in this case, in plutonium basically. So uh, as Aditi said, Kushala said, it's old age. But it is not old age of one column or one row. 
it's see where is actinides actinides are here it's end of periodic table there are no elements up till now after that and plutonium is here and after plutonium all other are artificially made plutonium is the last very rare naturally formed thing otherwise you have to uh, you have to make artificially so when it comes to the end of periodic table we have to think bigger what it is it's an end of an era it is something is ending and something new is probably going to happen so as everyone said it is very rare metal ex extremely rare and very heavy which creates lot of heat extremely unstable this is very important they are extremely unstable they keep controlling their energy within but they are so uh, reactive they immediately reacts with the air and when we say it's old age we have to think what is this old age it is a wise old man wise why because this man is there on this earth for so many years so many births like if you see plutonium its half life is 25000 years and decay complete decay is 250000 years so they are there on earth for so many years they are so much knowledgeable they have seen so many lives and probably they can guide you ahead so from that aspect it's extremely wise extremely knowledgeable extremely experienced people and that's why they can connect to the other world also and when it comes to third column third column we say it's toddler but here it's very early toddler should i do this or that that is their confusion like if you see alumina which identity i have it's a family identity or i have my own identity similar way if we go to seventh row where in third column actinides are there what is me like i am in this world or i am part of the spiritual world that is because there's so much here but at the same time there's so much there they have so much connection to the other world but they have come here because they they see lot of destruction their duty is quite heavy here they want to do lot of things like bigger tasks are there it is not like i want to be a king of one kingdom but i have to look after this whole planet or probably their big very big task they see far beyond and that's why they have to control it today so what is old age old age is the time of the reflection right like our senses are becoming weak vision is weak my ear is weak but you don't have to see outside now you have to see inside i have to accept my life in the past whatever i have done i accept it and i go ahead but why so many pathologies developed here how is this patient looking behind that is very important what is creating so much illness why so many destructive processes are happening in this patient that is important to understand and with this old age comes the wisdom of seventh row why this uh, wisdom because they have that ethereal quality actinide all actinides have that ethereal qualities relating to humans because they are part of that and they have come here they are here to give you light to give you guide to show you directions they have so much power within that from distant they can heal others like the, this patient has come to this profession the healing profession why he is the chosen one because he has that much capacity and that's why he says ki i am not fit for the corporate life because he can work from the heart 
that is important he is a true healer actually this patient is a true healer little bit i'll talk about the ethereal quality because very few times we get this type of cases and it's un important to understand what is this quality so ethereal in sanskrit it's akash you are connected to the sky you are part of that sky so the five elements the earth earth gives the stability water gives you motion movement flow fire gives you passion but fire in early stage is very very constructive but when it comes to the old age it's destructive plutonium has so much fire within but it is and he knows it's very destructive but he is controlling it it's suppressing it but internalizing it air gives the creativity and all above is the ethereal quality which is space ether is the shunya avastha it is nothing but it is everything it is not part of the difficulties of life at well as it is there to help you guide you it makes all the movements happen in the life basically uh, ethereal is very positive and the divine power and it is a healing power it it's a connection between the two worlds which is very very thin but they are more towards the spiritual world that is they are more uh, real at that stage and that's why they can see ahead they have ability to see feel and help other they can be at distance and help others they have lot of intuitive qualities they have lot of healing qualities when it comes to plutonium nitricum see plutonium is very rare it has two qualities one it is used in nuclear weapon but as aditi said ki plutonium has two sides we have to understand this second side it is used in the space probe it has so much connection with the space it can see it can uh, it can make uh, connection with the two worlds that is the second quality of the plutonium so nitrogen and oxygen where are they they are in the 15th column and 16th column almost at the end of the row and this is the womb uh, uh, second row so here nitrogen wants to come out of the womb oxygen is stuck feeling suffocated and wants to come out so the both have lot of fire within so if you see this womb stage has lot of uh, connection with mother feminine element water which nitrogen and oxygen they reject because they have lot of fire within patient also said there uh, there is no motherly connection with anyone i have never celebrated birthdays after my mother's demise so there is so much fire inside and they reject the water element pluto this is the position of nitrogen and oxygen so i already told you plutonium half life and complete decay so they are very old ancient wise knowledgeable people used in space probes and uh, in any uh, chemical formula if you say strong dominates the weak so in this case if you see in plutonium nitricum per se the mature wise ancient old qualities of plutonium suppresses the child quality of nitrogen and oxygen that is mother love nurture plutonium itself is a lot of fire inside but because it has ethereal connection because it's old and wise it controls it it suppresses it it represses it and that's why there is so much deep grave multiple pathologies so with this i in my pm understanding Anything else you want to share, Aditi?
No, I think so. We have covered uh, uh, as far as this case is concerned, we have covered all the aspects and we could analyze it quite well and explain it. But uh, as we all know, these actinides and this plutonium nitricum uh, is, a, is a very uh, deep acting remedy and it has many facets and uh, it's a really a, a study at large. So we are again going to present another case of plutonium nitricum and we will continue our study in the next uh, uh, lecture also and uh, again we will come up with another case and in depth more studies of plutonium nitricum through repertory and through an uh, periodic table analysis further in yes and also through provings yeah, yeah and provings we will understand we will learn the provings in depth Yes, friends. Anyone else wants to add anything else? So, friends, uh, with this, we come to the... Uh, we have made two parts of this plutonium nitricum because it is a very uh, deep acting uh, remedy. The way we saw with Dr. Aditi's case, which was a wonderful case, and uh, she could correlate and she could solve this case she has read lot of things in the patient like in between the lines which we are supposed to read as a homeopath like you know uh, from the words that the patient used in the interview like the way when she asked about the skin that uh, what is what is it that finally you want me to treat and the patient said that i want to attack the uh, skin then uh, when she he said about the mother also he said he did not uh, celebrate any of the birthdays lot of other things like you know he the the way the doctor Aditi said that he was very snappish and he was very, you know, at times like he was very uh, sharp in his uh, uh, expressions. So uh, she could uh, easily understand the internalized anger of this patient through his expressions, which was extremely difficult. It was not at all easy. At the same time, with her, uh, Dr. Aditi's experience of the spiritual knowledge, she could understand the intergenerational correlations with of this patient and the plutonium and the actinides and she could apply it in this patient very easily so with uh, i mean i must congratulate dr aditi for solving this case so wonderfully you know uh, it would have been really difficult for me to uh, solve this case and to come to plutonium but i have learned uh, very nicely while uh, through your case and the studies that has been conducted uh, so uh, one thing which uh, uh, what I felt was that in the periodic table as uh, Dr. Kushala and Nirupama also explained that like the actinides are the uh, it is at the it is coming at the end of the periodic table where and in that actinides there are 15 elements and plutonium is one of them. So which is because it is at the end it is coming to the end of the era. And that is how, like, you know, we uh, see that there are a lot of connections between the other uh, connections with the other world. They are, and that is how it is a highly destructive and the syphilitic remedy. That is what uh, we are seeing, right? And um, that is how there is a spiritual connection with the karmas and the healing uh, qualities. So with this, uh, friends, we also have some more uh, uh, data, some, some other case which we will uh, take up in the next to this thing with a lot of rubrics understandings. The uh, rubrics of the mind study that we will take up in the next lecture. And we have created another part, plutonium nitricum 2 for you all people and which will be shortly sharing it with you all. Okay, friends. So with this study, hope you all will enjoy uh, learning plutonium nitricum with all of us. Thank you very much, friends. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Aditi. You. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. you. thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Anita, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.